reviews, discussions, and theories about films and horror, sci-fi, and genre. This is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. What's up, everybody? It's The Horror Deconstruction. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, most likely on YouTube. Give us a like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. Hit that thumbs up. Let people know that you listen to the show. 31 Days of Horror for this October and Halloween with your host, Comp. And today's film is Guzu, The Thing Forsaken by God, Part 1. Original title, Guzu, Kami ni misu terashimono, part one. A group of girls go to a house to spend time, spend a time, oh boy, spend a time in which they lived a horrible, oh boy, I think this is a horrible English translation of Japanese text. Listen to this one. A group of girls go to a house to spend a time in which they lived a horrible creeping monster with tentacles that tries to eat them one by one. And even though that is... Uh, grammatically incorrect, it's what happens in the movies. Directed by Kazuo Gaira Komizu. Written by Kazuo Gaira Komizu. Did the screenplay Hitoshi Matsuyama. Story Junzo Takagi. Story starring Yumiko Ishikawa, Naomi Kajitani, Kyoko Komiyama, Hidemi Maruyama, Tomoko Maruyama. I love pronouncing Japanese. Uh, I just love it. Uh, so this is indeed a short film. But you can find it on YouTube, and it is a freaking Japanese splattercore horror short. Hell, man, this one. So this is a about a, a creature that is. Uh, <laughs> there's a title. There's a like a, a, a some words at the beginning of the film where they, you know when a really specific type of horror film where they're trying to ex- explain away the the beginnings or the creation of a creature when they don't have to where they can be like allude to something without giving it actual uh, substance they don't have to like explain away what the fuck's going on in the movie because this is a, like a half an hour film and it, is, is it 40 minutes it's, yeah it's a 40 minute horror film but totally worth it uh, this review is going to be shorter than the film and I don't want to I'm not going to spoil anything but you know you know what this type of movie is when you're going into it Japanese splatter core films uh, I have not seen many of them and I, and I will start now because this is such a fun experience watching this one so like Splattercore, how can you say it? it's not something like those horrible? Um, I can't even think of the names. Of it. Let me let me explain what a good one is. Like uh, Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two have some good Splattercore effects. Dead Alive, there you go. That's a good one. That's Splattercore. Um, those type of good Splattercore films. So when Japanese do it, they do it super gory and super stylized, and it's super fun. Um, I don't know how many times I can say the word super. But I'll try again later on in this review. So this film is a typical for uh, Japanese, I guess they're college girls. Um, they are plucked right out of any anime or manga from the 1980s. They, ex- they act all in their own type of way. Um, there's there's one that's like, the three of them are like sort of cutesy girls. And one of them is like the sporty girl. So it's basically Sailor uh, Jupiter hanging out with the rest of the other sailors. That That's... That's pretty much basically what it is. These four cute young girls are having fun, running around town. They're on vacation, having a lovely time. Young, pretty young things that are having a good time, and they're going to stay at this residence uh, from a, I, I believe, is a, a scientist that they know. I'm very. I had just seen this movie maybe two weeks ago, um, but I. Um, it's it's very loose storyline work. It is just a a reason to show gore and gore effects and stuff like that but actually when i say the title card in the beginning of the movie is that there's this uh they show this this creature that you can't even explain what the hell it looks like it just looks like a mess of like junk it just looks like flesh and and veins and proboscis and 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 just weird looks like like a like a weird brain or something it's just very disgusting looking creature and it's all like everything in the movie is like practical effects some some better than ever some better than others (laughs) There's one part that I'll get that's pretty funny. But it, you see the monster at the beginning of the movie. It looks like a brain monster. It looks like one of those monsters that you see in a 1950s horror film. And uh, it has this scroll, this scroll, not a scroll at the beginning like Star Wars or anything like that. But it has this uh, interesting text that sort of explains what it is. Like I was just saying at the beginning of this episode. I'm just like um, uh, wasting time until I actually can read the clip to you. And what it says is, since... Time immemorial. There has been a life form that was abandoned by God and followed by a completely different evolutionary path from known animal species. Although a sentient creature, Guzu's hard appearance, and holy crap, this thing, this thing goes fast. 
<laughs> from known animal species. Uh, although a sentient creature, Guzu's horrid appearance and aggressive nature are unparalleled in the animal kingdom, which has thus shut it out from the pages of history. Though repeat, through repeated parasitism of other species, Guzu has a unique ability to manifest the appearance of human as well as other lower life forms. And now it is once again awakening after dormant eon. What does eon su mean? Whatever, that's a word. And it is now once again awakening on dormant eon. So this, uh, they show it at the beginning. They show it fully moving. They show it disgusting. They show it, uh, it's pulsating. It has white pus coming out of it. I can't explain what it looks like. It, it, it has no form that I know what it looks like. It looks like fucking lettuce on top of on top of uh, 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 whatever you put on, on hot dogs and shit like that. It's disgusting looking. It's really sauerkraut. It looks like that too. Um, when it comes in form later on in the film, it's uh, it, it has a little bit of a form. It's, it really is disgusting looking. It's just a, It has no face to it. It's just a disgusting creature. And so it starts from that disgusting opening of this oh, close-up of this creature and whatever the hell it is to these four girls having fun, making their way to this uh, scientist's house, and it's pretty funny that uh, there, are, there are here and there little shots for some reason. Like, it opens up with a woman putting her pantyhose on. Uh, I'm sorry, her stockings on. And there's, like, one shot that's weird where, it, like, an odd angle just to see up a girl's shorts. Like, you don't see anything specific, but you definitely, like, I'm sure there's somebody pausing it going, Oh, shit, some otaku. Four girls go to this house. They meet uh, the lab assistant that's there, this woman who has uh, uh, baby bangs, as they say, the short bang haircut. And she is very aloof and weird. And you notice that there's a lot of uh, covered up mirrors in the house. And they even, uh, she goes in while the girls are outside, she cracks one of the mirrors. And we actually get an attack from Guzu at the beginning inside the, the pool that's outside the house. There's what the, uh, the girl who's the sporty type is a little bit more investigative. And, and boy, that's where the practical part is the funniest screw up in this movie. It's not a screw up, but I guess it's just the only way they could get this. Uh, practical image looking. There's a part where she tries to confront the Guzu creature. She tries to see what the hell just happened. She goes into a staircase and they treat it like she's fallen into another dimension, which doesn't make any sense because it's not like another realm. It's just Guzu's there. He's able to like pick, or it's able to pick people through windows, so or mirrors. So why even have a mirror in the house? Like I would have just destroyed if she. <sighs> there wouldn't be in a movie if there wasn't a mirror. And listen, I'm making more than what this movie is. But there's a part where, like, she goes in and she breaks the all the little pocket mirrors in these girls' like bag. Uh, that's never a reference. The girls, the girls never open up their shit and go, "Hey, why is my mirror broken?" But there's a big mirror like in the kitchen. Like, why have it there? If this lady is a scientist, unless she she didn't want to set these kids up because she's trying to save them towards the end. But it's like. Why Why even have a mirror in the house? Like, what the hell is the point if you know? Because as soon as you, like, go next to the mirror, its tentacles shoot out and wrap around you in these pretty interesting, like, reversed um, graphics. Not graphics, but they're, like, it's all uh, it's all handheld, whole handmade, special effects, practical work. Um, it's shot really well. It's It looks like a... It looks just above shot on video. It doesn't look like video. It looks like film that it's shot on. Um, I'm I'm pissed off that this is only a part one. I wish there was. I I don't know if there's a part two. I doubt there's a part two. Uh, if there is, I'll go watch it because this was like fun and it, it is like I thought. Well, it's a little cheap with these sort of effects, like when Guzu bites a girl in the face. Um, like the girl actually is stabbed by Guzu in her her cheek <laughs> through the mirror, and she like if I got attacked by something through the mirror, because she's pretty much freaked out, and then she decides to go investigate it by herself by staying at home, and I'm like, why bother? But anyway, going back to the part with the, the, um, I know I just ran off what I was talking about, the funniest part in this movie, and it's not intentional, when the girl falls down and she falls into the other dimension, <clears throat> the sporty girl, like, she, they lay her on top of this, like, swivel that's spinning her around, it's supposed to look like you're spinning in, in a dimension, and it's the cheapest thing I've ever seen in a movie, it's so fucking funny, and that's like, that, that, I was laughing every time I saw I just rewound it and just laugh at every time I saw it, but one girl who, uh, who was killed by Guzu, it like, it like invades her body, and her chest and stomach explode, and it's extremely graphic, it's a very... The gore is really disgusting in this movie, and it's so good. Like, uh, girls get crushed. Girls get like a woman gets her head ripped off of her body. 
Um, it's typical um, high school Japanese anime girls that get scared and stand in place instead of running the fuck out or staying, still staying in the house even though the creature's in a certain place. Guzu is like, <clears throat> it does have evil dead stuff where all the the, uh, the the tentacles fly around the house and shit like that even though like you have no idea what the, the power levels of this monster are. <laughs> There's a, a very Mars task. Mars Attacks uh, way that the girls can defend themselves. If you've seen the Mars Attacks movie, um, it's just say it's music is it's music is a weapon like uh, like many a uh, bands like Rage Against the Machine say. So uh, Guzu itself, the creature looks cool. You can tell it's somebody in like a, a trash bag running around with practical effects on it. Uh, so yeah, I I I it's only forty minutes long. Uh, shit hits the fan about twenty minutes in. But it's not. It's never boring, and because you know it's short, and you know I didn't know that the gore was gonna be this graphic. But it's great. It's a great splatterhouse type of short film, so it's definitely worth watching. It's a very obscure Japanese splatter movie that's absolutely one to watch out for. So check it out. I would give it a, as like a, as a gore house movie. It's like a. It's an eight. It's a short, so it's eight out of ten. I'll give it eight out of ten. Don't take that fucking uh, turtle home with you. Don't do it. And with that, this has been The Hardy Construction. Thank you for listening.